Hi, JJ here with The Art of Value. So today I want to focus on Guru or Super Investor Portfolios again. It's that time where we've had reporting from the last quarter. But today I want to focus on small cap stocks, investors that invest in small caps. Because as Manish Paparaz said, you've got a better chance of, of going after multi-baggers having like 10 to 100x if you focus on small cap stocks it's just uh the, the maths works out that way you know if you're investing in a trillion dollar company is that really going to go 100x even 10x is hard from there thinking of tesla here but it's few and far between and that's going to really going to happen really so small caps are the way to go and i've got today i've got five investors and eight stocks as and some of them invest in the same small caps so it's interesting so not many do if you look at say even lee lu's portfolio we see all large caps in there now and it's just a matter of you know if you've got billions of dollars to invest you've got to put you can't really invest in small caps because it's not going to move the needle all right let's get into it okay if you find any value in this content if you enjoy it please drop us a like and a subscribe if you're not already if you're watching on youtube all right rob for now is first up rob for now you may or may not know of him as an investor he's a Kind of a younger investor compared to the likes of, of Buffett or Munger, but there yes, everybody is right. Uh, so Rob Vanell runs a it says here on Data Roma two hundred twenty one nearly two hundred twenty two million dollar portfolio. So it's not as not billions, but so he's able to invest in some smaller cap companies. But if you see on the list here, some of you are on audio, so. He he only has six stocks here, and that's. But I know this this is just the U.S. holdings that's uh, that that are listed here. In, I know he invests around the world. I've seen one some of his videos. But you will know. We'll just talk about the stocks in a minute. But who is Rob Vanell? He ru runs R R V Capital is an investment management company. It manages separately managed accounts for institutional clients, including some of the world's leading endowments in addition he's a sub advisor to the business owner fund now this is the interesting part about a bit about how they invest uh, definitely from the value investing uh, side of the spectrum end of the spectrum rv capital invests worldwide across all sectors investments are selected based on four criteria will the company be around and flourishing in 10 years or more is the company building a long-term competitive advantage? Does the management set the right example? And is the price attractive? If all four criteria are met, the fund buys with the intention to own for the long term. Concentration in single companies is high with around 10 holdings in the portfolio. Okay, so the, those US holdings, are pretty much the bulk of it, it's like 60%. And, uh, you know, it's interesting that they put valuation last there. So they look at the company and then think about the valuation, you know, maybe put it on the watch list, I would say. And then if it comes into into range, but they put a lot into the management. So pretty simple four four areas there. And this is Rob. He has a YouTube channel, which I, I've uh, had a look at this one particular video the other day called My my investor Q and A with questions on management, building RV capital, and my holdings, and it was from a few months ago. It's like the year they have a yearly meeting, and he answers Q and A, his Q and A there, which I found interesting. And he talks about the individual companies, which is of interest to us. So do have a look at that. I'll put it. I'll put a link in the in the description actually to that on YouTube and on elsewhere where this will be posted. All right, now we're going to talk about the companies. Okay, looking at uh, Robert Vanell's RV Capital Portfolio, as it's listed on Dataroma, we've got six companies listed there. Credit Acceptance Corp, Salesforce, which is a big company. Meta Platforms, of course, we're a big company. But Wix, Wix.com, Carvana, and Trupanion. So they're the companies that we can see there. But I also know from that video that I just talked about, at the very end, he talked about Ryman Healthcare, which is a New Zealand company. I'm in New Zealand, and it's a small cap. It's uh, fairly, fairly large for New Zealand, but a uh, small cap nonetheless. So of interest to me, uh, of us today in small caps, let's talk about Trupanion. I've seen this come up. You might have seen it come up, talked about by a few investors and, and some other investors that I, I'm going to talk about today also in, uh, invested in Trupanion. So I don't know anything about the company. I'm starting from scratch here, and I, I'm going to just talk about the description so the idea of this is just for you, if you are interested to, not to put it on your watch list, but for in for for further research. I'm not making any 
any, uh, I'm not giving any advice, not giving any recommendations. And I, this is just for me to put on my list for further in-depth research because, you know, uh, I think it was probably Manish Padbara who said again, fish where the fish are, or Charlie Munger, probably from Charlie Munger, fish where the fish are. So uh, this narrows down the field from the thousands and thousands of stocks out there to investors that already have invested good, really very good investors. And so it's a it's a good place to start. So True Panion, which is NASDAQ listed, and it's enterprise value of 2.66 billion, so it's not under a billion. If we're looking for small caps, under 1 billion would be kind of ideal, but 2.66. And what does it do? It's True Panion is a specialty insurance products provider in the United States. Its core business is the sale of insurance products tailor made for pets, especially cats and dogs. The company generates most of its revenue from the subscription fees for the medical for medical insurance plans. The company's medical plan pays most of the actual veterinary, veterinary costs for the accident and illness claims, has no payout limitations, and can be used to cover the cost incurred in any veterinary practice. Uh, emergency care center or specialty hos hospital primary in the United States and Canada and Puerto Rico. It operates in two business segments, subscription business and other business. So this interests me partly because we've ha we actually in the past few years have had pet insurance and it was good and it's the first time that we've had it. And I know over the over the years, over the decades, this has become more important. People people used to take their, their, their cats and dogs to the vet when... Uh, when when something went wrong, right? When they had a medical problem, and now people to take their take it for yearly checkups to do, you know, uh, different different things like just like going, to, going humans going to the doctor. So I'm just at the start of this. If I was going to find out about it, and I think I will go more into depth into this. And on that, on uh, Rob Vanell's YouTube channel, he has a video called "What Is True Panion Doing to Win the Pet Insurance Market." I'm going to watch that, and that should be an, a good place. It would be a good place to start to find out why Rob Vanell has invested in it. And also, I'm going to click just click on on uh, True Panion to see here Josh Tarasoff, Char Josh Tarasoff, which he's kind of new to me as an investor as well. And we're going, I'm going to talk about him today as well because, and he's also invested in True Panion to five point seven six percent. Rob Vanell's stake here. His portfolio is, is his 0. 0.6, which is pretty low, but he added 89 point, 89, nearly 80, uh, 90% recently. And uh, I see there Thomas Gaynor from uh, Markel also has a small stake in Trupanion. I know the way that he invests is to, he, he invests in a lot of stocks, but it's starting off really small. And if the company, as he knows more about the company, if it gets better, he adds more and more. So the top stakes are, are really big, and he has quite a lot of small ones. But he's made an initial investment in True Panion. And if we see here, Q2 2022, Rob Vanell added 89%. Josh Tarasov reduced it by just 8%. And Poland Capital sold 100%, so they sold out. I also know of a, a fund here in, in uh, New Zealand that invested in True Panion. I think they might have sold out of it too, a value-focused fund. That's uh, True Panion. I don't know anything more about the company. But it's definitely on my list to find out more about. Okay, next up in the small cap universe, in, in uh, Rob Vanell's short small cap universe, is Wix. So I've seen this come up on, on a few Guru Super Investor portfolios as well. We have a, a Wix user in the household. My wife uses Wix as a, for a portfolio. And it's, it's she's had a good experience. And I'm going to try it out too as part of research for, for Wix. So what, Wix is an Israeli company, but it's listed on NASDAQ index, and its enterprise value is currently $3.66 billion, around there. It might not be accurate, that's just off a website. To work that out yourself, exactly what the enterprise value is, but uh, probably reasonably accurate. And the description of Wix is a cloud-based development platform provider for millions of registered users worldwide. The company is engaged in web development and management that provides an easy-to-use, powerful cloud-based platform of products through a freemium model. Its core products consist of three web editors. The Wix editor intended for users with basic technological skills, Wix ADI intended for novice users or 
COVID intended for more tech-savvy users. The company's web development technology is based on HTML5 and other and offers HTML5 uh, compatible capabilities, web design and layout tools, domain hosting and other marketing and workflow management applications and services. The geographic segments include North America, Europe, Latin America, Asia and others. So we would be the others. It's pretty much global, isn't it? So potential to get to be to turn to a big company. And I, I, I do hear of Wix quite often just, you know, uh, around not in, in non-investing circles is getting pretty popular. And so I think that's one that would be worth investigating, frankly. And other investors are invested in Wix too. As I said, let's just click through here and see. I'm going to click through and see on the, on Dataroma and see who else is invested. Pat Dorsey, I'm going to talk about him today too, is 15.37 big investment uh, percentage towards Wix. I've, I've noticed in past quarters that he, that he was invested. And he added 19%. Let's see the just let's see the recent activity of Wix. So Pat Dorsey added 19%. You know, these if we look at the stock prices, pretty much we can assume that they're pretty much all, all down in the last few quarters, majorly down. So and Rob Fennell uh, added 9.58% in Q1 2022. So that's two investors, two kind of uh, sort of big name really investors. It, uh, invested in Wix, so that's worth investigating. Thomas Tom Gainer again sell, sold 100% in Q3 2021. Just a small had a small stake in that, but obviously decided it wasn't worth keeping on with. So that's something to keep in mind as well. All right, so that's that's Wix. Okay, so now we turn to Ryman Healthcare, which is uh, part of uh, Rob Vanell's portfolio, or at least it was when he talked a few months ago about it. I'm sure it is because they're very long term. So Ryman Healthcare is a New Zealand company where I live, and I so I do know Ryman. I know I've seen their their properties around, and I'm there. I've seen them building, seen them building one not far from where I am. So I'm able to check out Ryman, but I haven't yet. There's one thing that put me off Ryman when I looked at it a while ago, and I'll tell you what that is soon. Uh, so it's uh, NZSE, the New Zealand Stock Exchange, RYM, but also it trades on over-the-counter OTC uh, in the US, I believe, RHCGF's the ticker, and it has a market cap of 4.47 billion New Zealand dollars, which is only 2.75 billion US. And what does Ryman do? So he, as I said, if you watch the end of that Q&A session, uh, Rob Benal goes pretty much tells tells us his thesis of Ryman, and so we'll go and have a look at that. But Ryman's healthcare, de- Ryman Healthcare develops, owns, and operates retirement villages and aged care facilities in New Zealand and Australia. Most Ryman villages offer a combination of dependent and service units alongside hospital, dementia, and rest rest home care. Income is predominantly earned from aged care fees, retirement unit management fees, development. Ma- margins on new units and capital gains generated when residents vacate and Ryman resells uh, existing units. So that is the pro- that is part of the problem for me because uh, the, the capital gains there uh, are a problem and they, they wouldn't usually be. So what happens is the, the residents and the residents' families don't get the capital gains from, from going into the unit, which some people might have a problem with. I mean, uh, you have to pay, you do have to pay a lot to to, to go, as I understand it, to go into these units and then the capital gains go back to the company. Um, and so um, Rob Vanell didn't really, he, I mean, he doesn't see that as a problem, but potentially that that's kind of, uh, it's, it's, I mean, it's probably why the company's doing so well, but potentially that's morally a problem for some people. Anyway, the capital gains, the problem, part of the problem that I saw when I looked at the company very briefly was because I live in New Zealand, the real estate market has been booming in recent years. And I would define it personally as a bubble. And it's the last few months, it's gone down 15% in in the, in the biggest city in Auckland. And it, it just over the last, even to, I think two years, it's been up, it went up like 45% or something. And then the years before that, it was double digits. Like we've had a real boom and... Uh, in world terms, it's been an expensive market, and so yes, they've been doing well. But I could see a time. I, I, I mean, I would 
be sort of definitely back off from it from that point of view because I could see the company could get sort of uh, not do so well because of those capital gains. But I don't. That's all I know. I haven't really haven't even looked at the company. I mean, if you look at my uh, financial software here on Guru Focus, it uh, it basically says value trap. Watch out. Think twice. And that's not necessarily correct. No, we're not, we won't go into the numbers here because that's not what it's about. But it's something to go on the list, and I will definitely be looking into it. Partly because it's in my own home country. I don't have any. I don't have any investments in in New Zealand uh, company stocks at the moment, and so that could go on my list for further investigation. I think. Anyway, so that's Roman Healthcare. Okay, next investor up is Josh Tarasoff who is new to me from Greenlee Lane Capital. So I haven't looked uh, at, I've been looking at his portfolio before, but not in depth. I don't really know much about him, but he runs a similar size to Rob Vanell, 251,000 it says here on, uh, on Data Roma. And with 10 stocks, that's 10 US stocks. I don't know if he has stocks outside the US, could well be. But if we, we're, we're focusing on the small cap, so we've got ones like Amazon, Salesforce, Brook. Brookfield Asset Management, huge companies, Google, Shopify, Netflix, and Trupanion. There you go. So so uh, Josh Cherisoff also invests in Trupanion. Spotify, which I'm invested in, one of my biggest positions. And Monday.com, which again, there's a couple of investors here, a small cap that, that I don't know much about. Monday.com, I've seen their ads, I've seen their ads online. And Burford Capital. So they're the positions. So we're going to be looking at Monday because I'm interested to see what that is. Who is Josh Tarasoff? This is the website, Greenlee Capital. Now I notice on here there's a public materials section and an essay about Greenlee and how Greenlee Lane invests, which would be good in an interview from July 2021. I think both, I haven't read those, but both of those would be worth reading for sure, I would say. And he also is on Twitter at Josh Tarasoff, so worth having a follow on Twitter, I would say. Back to Monday.com, that's what we're interested in. We've been through, we've been, we've been through Trupanion, so we don't need to go through that again. So Monday.com's a $4.5 billion company, and it's, it's uh, located in Israel again, based in Israel, enterprise value is 4.45 billion, so 4.45, Five four billion. Sorry, it's quite it's a fairly large company for it, uh, in the scheme of things, really. But still small enough, under five billion, I would say. If, I mean, Monish Pabrai said anything under five billion, you could, could go. If a lot of companies don't get to to fifty billion dollar size, very few. So uh, anything above five billion would be kind of out of range, I would say. But this is just in range. So Monday.com. Work Limited Work OS is an open platform that democratizes the power of software so organizations can easily build work management tools and software applications to fit their every need. The platform intuitively connects people to processes and systems, empowering teams to excel in every aspect of their work while creating an environment for transparency on business. Monday.com operates in Tel Aviv. New York, San Francisco, Miami, Chicago, London, Sydney, San Paulo, and Tokyo. So they're based sort of around the world are probably expanding worldwide. So software management software, I understand it. And so that's worth putting on not the watch list, but the the the, the, the uh, for research, the list for re for further research, I would say. And let's see, I'm just going to click on it to see who else invests in monday.com. Greg Alexander, who we're going to be looking at today too. And he is an investor that Warren Buffett called out as, as being a good, uh, that he would invest with, I think, or be prepared just as somebody who's a, who is potentially a very good investor. And... Uh, let's see what's the activity on the stock, monday.com. So Greg Alexander has just bought first time in Q2 2022, 1.56% of the portfolio. And uh, Josh Tarasov reduced it a little bit. Okay, this is Greg Alexander's portfolio. He runs a $662 million portfolio, so bigger than the others so far. That's from what uh, Data Roma says anyway. And... 
it's quite a unique portfolio. There are big holdings in Equitable Holdings and Stellantis of 31%. It says so high conviction in those. This is just the US holdings. We don't I don't know if there's others. And so Builders First Source 20%, International Money Express 6%, Yandex 5%, which I believe is like the Russian Google. So uh, I don't know how, he man how he's managing to or wanting to invest in, in that, but some uh, decent conviction there. I think that's the case. Let me know in the comments if that's wrong. I don't know much about Yandex. I haven't looked it up. Probably not going to. So I actually don't know. And Remini Street is 3.8 Monday.com. So he's invested in about 1.5% of the portfolio. It's a new buy by the look of it. And EVI Industries just 0.18. And, and Chris Sud Incorporated 0.09. So those might those actually might be small cap. I'm not sure. I haven't looked into those. I'm just focusing on these few small caps today, but let me know if you know anything about those. And so let's just look at the activity in the last quarter to see what uh, he's been up to in terms of Monday. Yeah, buying buying 100,000 shares of Monday.com, so 1.56. So even though it's a small percentage, it's fa it's fairly substantial for small caps, isn't it? Because uh, in such, with such a big portfolio. And I see there he's sold JD.com from China and Liberty Media and GTY Technology Holdings for that quarter. Interesting. He added 172% for Yandex at the quarter before that. All right, so that's Greg Alexander. Okay, now we're going to look at Pat Dorsey, Pat Dorsey's portfolio. He runs an $800 million portfolio, so bigger again. And you've got 10 stocks in here. I don't know if there are any international ones. These are US ones, but I find it to be a, it's a fascinating portfolio, this one. Wix, Wix.com is the top, making up 15.37%, which is very high conviction. So that's another reason that I think to dig deeper into Wix at some point and see what see why, why Pat and... and uh, and the others invested see what Wix why why they see such a big uh, have such high conviction in Wix, and the next is it's bigger than Meta. His next next uh, next book position is Meta for fifteen percent, Roku for fourteen percent, Smart Sheet, which is one of the a small cap that I want to talk about, and Disney's the next at eight percent, Alphabet seven. Nearly 8% Upwork, another, another small cap which uh, I want to talk about as well. PayPal Holdings, big company, Poshmark. So another small cap that I want to talk about. There's, there's three that he's got and SEMrush Holdings. I don't know if that's a small cap, haven't looked at that. But these the three, those are what I want to focus on that, that uh, Pat Dorsey's into and has conviction in. And let's see the activity actually before I go into the companies themselves. Uh, just in this last quarter, or Q2 2022, Roku added 100%, 109% to what he already had. Upwork added 71, so he's been adding to these substantially. Sold out of eBay, 20, uh, 100%. Wix up, um, added 19%. Smartsheet added 14%. So Poshmark added 13% to the, all these. So let's look at these companies now. Uh, we have Smartsheet. What is Smartsheet and how much is it? It's a $14, $4 billion company, so it's a reasonably large small cap. And uh, it's, it trades on the NYSE under SMAR. It is Smartsheet provides a cloud-based platform for work execution that enables teams and organizations to plan, capture, manage, automate, and report on work at a scale that results in more efficient processes and better business outcomes. It provides various services such as streamlined facilities management, management customer experiences, manages budget and planning and other related services. The product generates a majority of its revenue from subscriptions. Geographically, it operates in the United States, EMEA, Asia and the Americas other than the United States, generating a a majority of its revenue in from the United States. So it sounds a bit like Monday.com or management software. Anyway, but uh, and so the next one is Upwork, which has a he has a position in. 
it's uh, trades on the NASDAQ and it's an enterprise value smaller at 2.2 billion uh, market, enterprise value. So it's Upwork is a, is a United States based company that operates an online marketplace that enables businesses to find and work with highly skilled independent professionals. Uh, the developer platform for hiring and, and freelancing purposes and it provides offering, offering offers include Upwork Basic, Upwork Plus, Upwork Business, Upwork Enterprise and Upwork Payroll. So it deals with the payroll as well. Businesses generate revenue from talent and clients across the USA, India, Philippines and the rest of the world. Subscription, a substantial income is derived from providing services to clients. Okay, and the last one, Poshmark, which I actually have had a position in, but I sold it because I just had too many stocks. Ever since it listed, it listed kind of at the peak of uh, what I think was the was a bubble when it's kind of went down, 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 and just it went so low. But uh, it's interesting that Pat Dorsey's invested in it. It's an interesting company, what it does, and uh, the fundamentals as well. But I'll, I won't talk about that now. I'll just talk about what it actually is. So it's down to a, a two hundred and sixty-one million dollar company, which is pretty small compared to, to where it listed um, so they got pretty got some money out of listing for sure and it, it listing at a good time but there were some seriously unhappy investors out there posh I'm sure Pat Dorsey didn't buy it at the peak Poshmark is one of the largest players in a quickly growing e-commerce resale space connecting more than 30 million active users on the platform that sells men's and women's apparel accessories, shoes, and more recently, consumer electronics and pet products. The marketplace operates in four countries, US, Canada, Australia, and India. So India and Australia are new, I know that. They're expanding, they want to expand it internationally, which is difficult to do. Um, it's kind of, if you think about it, this could be a sort of a section of eBay, really. So it's sort of taking that vertical, but they're, now they're expanding out to other products. So it's a capital light peer-to-peer -peer model that dovetails nicely and with prevailing trends towards social e-commerce, apparel, resale, and an ongoing pivot towards the e-commerce channel. With 1.8 billion in, in 2021 gross uh, merchandise volume and or GMV, we estimate the firm captured about 13 to 14% of domestic online resale market. Hmm. And rolling with rolling lockdowns and tangled supply chains providing a meaningful impetus for channel trial during 20 and 2021 so i think it's one to keep an eye on one to put on the list of for further research i as i said i had a position i just had too many i wanted to cut down concentrate more and uh it has gone down <laughs> since then um but i'd be could see myself getting back into it at some point if, if it if just keeping an eye on it anyway and it's interesting that pat dorsey has a substantial position is it substantial yeah it is a fairly substantial position in it. Okay, last but certainly not not least is Chuck Acra. Is that how you say it? Acra, Acra. He's a well-known investor for sure. He's running twelve billion, twelve and a half billion dollar portfolio, so much bigger, but still invests in the odd small cap, twenty-one stocks. And if you look, if we look at the portfolio, I mean, he's famous for having multiple one hundred baggers over over the years. I think. It's American Tower is one of them, American Tower Corp and MasterCard. And the small cap I want to talk about today is seems quite similar to, to American Tower in a way. So that's very interesting, I think. Uh, and so, but he's, as I said, 21 stocks starting at MasterCard, American Tower, Moody's, Visa. So big companies, O'Reilly Automotive. They weren't so big when he started investing in them. He's uh, CarMax, Adobe. Brookfield Asset Management, Salesforce, CoStar Group. I mean, these are all uh, these are all good companies that have done well over time. Vers Versic Analytics, that's smaller. Danaher, Snowflake is a new buy. Interesting, but not small cap. So the one that we want to get to now is it's point, only 0.64% of the portfolio, but it is a small cap. As I said, they, they wouldn't be able to put too much into it when it's a small cap. But it's called DataBridge. Uh, and it's have added six point sixty uh fifty six percent to data bridge in the last quarter let's i'm going to click through to that and see who else has it 
Meridian contrarian fund Seth Klarman, who reduced it 28%. That's interesting too, Seth Klarman, legendary value investor. All right, so description of DataBridge is a digital group, digital data bridge group incorporated as the general digital fi- infrastructure real estate investment trust that owns, operates, and invests in digital infrastructure and real estate. Previously, Colony Capital, the firm merged with its subsidiary Digital Colony in 2020 to rebrand as DataBridge. The merger discontinued ownership of hospitality real estate uh, shifted focus toward d- digital infrastructure. Its services occupy three segments, digital investment management, digital operating and corporate and other. The digital operating segment, which owns and leases digital assets, accounts for the majority of the firm's revenue from markets, primarily located in the United States. Okay, did I say how big this was? 9.91 billion enterprise value and and 3.18 market cap. So there's a big difference between the, the EV and the market cap. So that it would... I, I think this would be a very interesting company to look into as a small cap, uh, for sure, because, I mean, what a record this this guy has had. And I don't know if it's him or one of his analysts, but he certainly certainly would have had to okay it. And, uh, you know, one definitely one for my list to look further into to see what that's all about. Okay, that's all that's all for today. If you if you found value any value in this, if you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe if you're not subscribed already. If you're on, on YouTube and follow elsewhere if you if you're listening or watching elsewhere, thank you and see you next time.